So, what is food hacking? Food hacking. That one house. Food hacking. What is it? Trying to incorporate food into your PC. A lot of people do that. You know, they eat on their keyboards and stuff like that, and and they're hacking away, and food ends up in their keyboard or their drink, and they that's food hacking. Chopping up food with a hatchet. Chop, 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 chop. Hack, hack, hack. Is that food hacking? Or is it asking the question, can I regrow it? So eventually, I don't have to buy it. Well, you guessed right. Basically, food hacking is that question. So, look at all this food, nice fresh food in here. And the question is, which of this food, of this food can I regrow, and which can I not? So, the idea is very simple. If I buy something, and I can regrow it each time. Eventually, I'm going to have more growing, provided I have the space, than I need to buy. Right. So the question is, is how much of the food you buy can you actually regrow? So this morning, I'm going to do a little talk here about which one. So looking at this picture again, which ones do you think you can actually regrow? So here, on the top shelf, look at this, we've got some paprika and some apples and stuff like that. What is paprika? I don't remember what this is called. Or this is some sort of citrusy fruit. Now obviously, there's some pears down here, you know. Obviously if you live in, you know, on a mountain or something else, above the tree line, uh, or above the fruit line, you won't be able to grow certain things. But every one of these can be regrown. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you can't, re you can't grow apples from apple seeds. Actually, that's incorrect. You may not be able to grow the apple that you are eating from the apple seed. Why? Because simply, it's been pollinated from another apple. But that's not exactly true either, because most of these apples come from very large orchards. And what happens is the bees are, tra are basically going from one good apple tree to another good apple tree. So in all likelihood, you're going to grow a pretty good damn apple from an apple seed from an apple. So if there was crab apples nearby, or if there was other species nearby, then yes, that's the case. But in these large orchard systems that we have around the world, in all likelihood, if you grow a tree from this apple, you're going to get an apple tree, an apple as good as this one. Same goes with oranges, right? They say, oh, you can't grow oranges from orange seeds. You may not get this orange, but in all likelihood, as long as the pollen is coming from a nearby source of a seed that is good, then you can. Obviously, there's other things to consider, like the, you know, the strain, the root systems, and what they end up doing is they actually use kind of what's known as a feral orange, or maybe that's the wrong term, but basically an orange that has a much better root system and then they add on top of that an orange which has a very nice fruit system. So the root system is because it's hardy into that climate and then the top system is because it produces a nice fruit. So, but does it really matter? If you got seeds, plant them. If they come out great, whatever. Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. The idea is to hack your food. Tomatoes are easy, so easy to grow. All you need to do is chop the end off squeeze into a cup, let set for a week, put them into, you can dry them out, or actually you can put them right into the ground. You don't need to, you know, unless you want to basically sell tomato seeds, which you can, or provide them, then you'd put them on a piece of paper, dry them out, and then put them in a bag. So, oh, so let's say these are um, pesticide, you know, these were grown with pesticides, they're not grown organic. Well, the seeds aren't going to be affected by that. When you grow the next batch, they're going to be organic. So, as long as you don't use pesticides. These are more tomatoes, more tomatoes. They're all different. So, I have a tomato cup where I put them in. Um, this here is kiwi. Kiwi has seeds in them. Now, the, key, the thing with a kiwi is there's male and female. So, in order for a kiwi to cross-pollinate, they actually need a male plant and a female plant next to each other. So the bees can go back and forth, back and forth. It's the only fruit that I know is like that, but it makes hacking it a little bit more challenging. It doesn't mean it's impossible. 
Things like these don't have seats. And you know, that's what's going to be the future. These organizations don't want to have seeds in their food. Actually, in Japan, we have seedless tomatoes. So, eventually, what's going to happen, if we don't hack our food, eventually, there's going to be no way to grow them. If you enjoyed this lesson here from Founder House on how to hack your food. Yeah, hack your food sometimes. It's hacking your food sometimes. Sure. Yes. Alright, that's it for today on, on hacking food. So go out there, hack some food, do some videos, use the hashtag hackfood, and um, share your food hacking experience. And I can show you right now tons of things. Oh, before I go, here's some other clever things you can do with hacking food. Anytime you see seed on the label, plant it. I plant it. Right? Because I'll tell you, this uh, chia uh, bush is going to be a lot more nutritious than the chia seed. So I'm going to grow chia in a confined area and as it grows, cut it and then I'm going to be putting it into my drinks and everything else to basically put living food into your system.